Hey everyone, my name is Nathan, and uh, today I thought I would talk about um, the school systems uh, a little bit. So, not really that much of a, a public speaker or anything like that. I make YouTube, um, talk to my friends. Um, I don't really do that much in general when it comes to public speaking. I don't really like doing a presentation in class, unless I know what I'm doing, then it's fine. But, um... Basically, I wanted to talk a little bit about public schools. So, public schools have been around for a very long time. For at least 100, maybe even 200 years, I'm not sure, um, when the first public schools were added. Um, but I know it's been in America, especially for a very long time. Um, most of the time it's to educate kids, it is to um, teach kids the way of life, um, and how to uh, eat drink, well not really eat, but just learn, uh, learn words, learn how to speak, um, and uh, just some more complex topics like science, literature, um, and some other fun stuff like that. And I have no problem with that. I'm glad that the school teaches us that. I'm so glad to be back in school um, for all it's worth. But here's the problem. It's not what the school teaches. It has never been that way that the school only teaches that. Now here's the thing. A long time ago, um, in the 1960s and the 50s, there was a large debate about whether they should hold public prayer in school, whether they should have the students pray before class, um, and a lot of us would say that that is not okay today, um, on basis that it goes against other people's beliefs, that it goes against other people's foundational philosophies, because it is a Christian thing. But I'd have to ask you, what are we teaching kids today? What are we teaching kids today? Are we teaching them, really, how to think with a critical mind? I would have to say no. And here's why. I have seen multiple things that demean my own belief system. I'm a Christian. I think that most people know this on this channel by now. <laughs> I hope. Um, but they don't respect my beliefs. Why do you think they would? It's what God said would happen. They said that they would not dis or that they would not respect my beliefs. They said that it would not be this way. Of course, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. But here's the thing: the hypocrisy must be exposed. Here's an example. In my English class, we were watching a skepticism video where Bill Nye, other very well-known skeptics who are skeptical about almost everything this world has to offer, they are skeptical that we were created by a god. Now to them I'd have to ask, what do you see outside? Is it matter? Where does matter come from? You don't know? Science, science will figure it out? You think? Do you really think that? Do you really think that science will figure it out? Because science studies nature. It does not create nature. It has never found a method of which it creates. It's like evolutionists saying DNA, there's a some hidden random system that can mutate DNA to make new organisms that are completely different than the ones that it started with. Completely false. DNA cannot do that. We know this. We know this. But yet they still push it down your, our kids' throats. They push it down my throat as well. Of course, I don't believe it. Um, and I just cannot believe the audacity that some people have. Here it is. You are giving kids false hope. You are giving them no hope. You are making them sad. You are making them miserable. And for what? For an increased intellectual capacity? For an academic scholarship, for a life that has no meaning. What is the point? Kids need hope. We all need hope. I have no problem with you telling me that my belief system is wrong. I have no problem with that. But don't tell me yours is right. If you tell me yours is right, then I'm going to do some investigative research. And a lot of the time I'm going to figure out that it's not. Your evidence is based on factual things. For example, Islam 
says that the sun sets in a muddy puddle. Mohammed had a nine-year-old wife. Does that sound like a man that you would like to follow? Does that sound like a man that has the truth of life? No, it's because we know these things to be wrong. Why? Because it's factually, morally, and ethically wrong. They killed Christians. And I just want to say that I do not hate any of the teachers in the public schools. I do not despise any of them. I love all of them. But I want to say that if you're going to call it education, let it be education. Teach us all of the methods. Teach us teach us about Hinduism. Teach us about Christianity. Teach us about evolution. Let us make the decision. Why are you telling us that evolution is true? Do you want us to believe something that we clearly know is not? Why do you tell us that we should be skeptical about God and think of him as a flying mythical dragon? Clearly he's not. Clearly, we can see with our own eyes, the eyes that are so complex that even Darwin questioned his own theory. Read about it. Darwin even said that it is impossible if we do not find a method that eyes were created or that the stomach was um, created by evolution. Because, of course, you know, birds can adapt feathers, you know, and that's very easy for birds to do. But I'd have to ask you, who said that? Evolution is supposed to be mindless. That means that it has no purpose. It has no purpose. It is not purpose to survive. Because if it did, then it would not be purposeless. It would have a mind behind it. You cannot lie about this anymore, public school system. You know this to be true. You've taught us evolution. You've taught us moral fallacies. And you've told us that we must be inclusive. But yet you are not inclusive to any Christian, for that matter, trying to... Um, here, I'll give an example. If a teacher that was a Christian wanted to put a picture of Jesus up on the wall, could they? Could they really? No, they couldn't. You want to know why? Because the school system hates Christians. You want to know why? Because the world hates Christians. You want to know why the world hates Christians? Because Satan hates Christians. Satan despises Christians. Any Christian out there who does not actively rebuke Satan, know that he's taking you captive. Any Christian that does not actively learn about God through his word, know this, that Satan is taking you captive. This world is going to hell. All of it. All of this world, it's becoming worse. Churches in Canada are being burned. I was reading an article about how, um, how uh, a person was making the argument that we as a church are not persecuted. This was written in 2015, a few years before this all started. But um, he said, the churches are not being burned. We are not forced to accept gay couples. Um, but I'd have to ask you now, is that really true anymore? Is that really the case? Because I'd have to argue that it's not. It is really not. It is getting worse in this world. I want to say that there still is hope. And that I'm still here today and I'm still happy today because I have hope. And you may not believe in the hope that I have, but I have evidence for my hope. I see what is around me. I have heard stories. I have seen archaeological evidence, thousands of manuscripts, more than any other book in the entire world. The Bible is the most supported book in the entire world. There are thousands of manuscripts that date back to 200, 300 AD. The Homer's Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey, 500 years before the first surviving manuscripts are still kept. But we still take it as 95% accurate or something. The Bible is 99.5% accurate if you think about it. There are some things that were added later on, um, but all those verses are supporting verses and they basically just wrap up the thought, kind of like me saying, I took my dogs out for a walk, and then someone says, so Nathan took his dogs out for a walk. Is that really adding anything, or is that just putting a little footnote on there of what I'm doing? It's rehearsing. It's regurgitating information. It's exactly what happens. Now, me, myself, I'm not perfect. I do not know all the evidence. There are historians of that time who wrote about Christians and wrote about a man named Jesus. He was there. He was alive, and he was dead. 
but then he was alive again. That is remarkable. You want to know why the Jews still believe that Jesus is dead? It's because the governor knew that if this word got out, and if the Romans and the Jews knew, then everyone would believe. We know that the, that the tomb was guarded. We know that he was crucified. The question is really, was he risen? And I have to say, with no doubt in my heart, that he was. He was. He rose. He is alive forevermore. And if any of you want to believe in Jesus today, to have hope away from this godless society who teaches you that there is no hope, there is no meaning to life, you want to know why the suicide rates are four times higher or whatever? You want to know why drug rates are so much higher? You want to know why alcohol abuse is so much higher, especially in younger kids? It's because of our schools. It's because of Satan. He has infiltrated our schools. God is coming. And I want to tell you that he loves all of us. He wants us to change from our sinful ways. Because sin does not bring about happiness. It brings about slavery. We talk about slavery as if it is something bad, and it is. Slavery is bad. But Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are, who are weary, and I will give you rest. For learn from me, from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart. Jesus said that. He's, and here's what it says, if you want to believe in Jesus. It says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever confesses with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believes that he has risen from the dead, is saved. Saved from the punishment of slavery. Saved from the punishment of hell. You have hope. Hope is things that we cannot see, but we still long for, and that we know is coming. So I want to ask you, where is your hope? Where is your hope in this lost world? We need hope. The school system isn't going to give us that. It's just going to bring us farther away from that. We need hope in Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the world no matter what people say. This world is becoming more godless, and someday I might be killed for what I believe in. And it may be sooner than I may think. Um, but the truth is, is that I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because I know this, that Jesus loves me, that he died for me, that he's coming back. And when he comes back, He's going to give everyone what they deserve. Whether it be salvation, whether it be punishment. And uh, I know I'm going to be on the receiving end of glory. All glory be to God. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. It's a relatively long video. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a great day or night. Um, goodbye.